it's kind of an update on those games. That's what 17-bit are kind of known for, you know, taking older games and updating them into, uh, you know, kind of today's standards. So some of the inspirations for this game were obviously some of the older games, uh, the older shooting games, Gallagher and uh, stuff like that. Uh, none of them, the other ones come to me. Um, but obviously older anime as well, Gundam and uh, Yamato, things like that. As you can see probably from this uh, this screen here. So, uh, oh, a little bit about myself probably is best. Um, so like I say, my name's Tom, uh, Tom Hart, uh, game designer uh, and artist. Um, so here at 17-Bit I've been working on Galaxy now for about a year, just over a year, and uh, doing some of the stuff like the enemy AI and the balancing of the weapons and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so uh, obviously here we are in Kyoto, a uh, very Japanese style room. Um, I've lived in Japan for 10 years, um, liking it obviously, uh, that's why I stick around <laughs> and uh, learn Japanese at university and, and so I've been living here and uh, I used to work at Capcom for a bit, uh, I was there for four years and now here I am at 17-bit making indie games which is nothing more fun really, is there Brett? Nothing! <laughs> okay so let's play some games because that's what you came to see. Um, so here I am, I'm at the end of season two, so Galaxy is split into seasons and uh, as you complete them you kind of reset um, to the last season and I'm on the last mission, mission 5 and basically my mission is to, as Beam's going to tell me <coughs> I have to rescue Akamoto who is the Admiral um, who's been captured by the enemy which sucks and now we're going to have to rescue him so yeah it's, it's easy stuff I mean when you made the enemy AI yourself, it kind of makes it a busy, bit easier to, to defeat them, but I'm going to try and make it fun anyway. So yeah, the head of the United Earth Navy himself, Admiral Akamoto, and the main uh, character, Atak, is pretty into this guy in a bit of a weird way, um, is being held by the Imperials deep within an abandoned ship, Ship Hulk, uh, in his escape pod. So we need to find his escape pod and then bring him back alive. Or well, we'll try anyway. Um, so here I am in the shop. Um, Crash, my buddy, uh, he sells me stuff at stupidly inflated prices and I have no money, so I guess I'll just jump straight in. And yeah, I just realised I started on the last mission of a season, even though I don't have any uh, stuff. So uh, this should be interesting. So you get like tons of upgrades um, over the course of a season, and I kind of cheated a bit so I can just show you this mission because it's a lot of fun. Uh, so I have nothing but my trusty laser. Shoot some asteroids because that's always fun. Um, I have my trusty laser and I also have missiles which I lock onto enemies with this. And I'll show you some of this. So let's sneak up here. And the game's completely physics based, so. Oh yeah. Look at that. Macross style missiles, yeah. Simple. Um, so the, the game's like totally physics based. Uh, so all my movement, when I'm thrusting around, I can control where I'm going. As soon as I let go of thrust, I'm suddenly floating through space. Um, we made it so that, you know, if you bump into walls and stuff, it doesn't hurt you because that would really, really suck. Um, and yeah, so the controls are all physics based and a lot of the items and enemies and stuff are physics based too. And one of the things that we showed very late in the day was this cool thing. Yeah, now I'm a mech. So you can transform at will uh, between the fighter, which obviously has the lasers and missiles I talked about before, and you have the mech. And this guy's got a sword, so he's obviously cooler than the ship. Um, and the sword's obviously great for hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, but taking advantage of the physics that I just talked about, I can grab things and then I can chuck it. And yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to just like use the environment to your advantage. Which, when you start playing the game, the environment's basically going to be your your enemy, and you're going to hate it. Um, but as you play, you'll learn that some of these things are, are usable against the enemy, and so that's uh, the physics at play. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to just try and sneak up on these guys. We also have some like stealth-esque mechanics. So these guys are... Oh, okay, they shouldn't, have, they shouldn't have done that. I'll make them pay. So the mech also has a shield, which is obviously very, very useful. Um, and he has this grab. He doesn't have missiles, but he can grab people like I just did and throw them. And a good combination of, obviously, the three of those, the sword, the shield, and the grab, allows you to uh, basically destroy... I mean, let's face it, the mech, no one can take him on in one-on-one uh, -on -one combat. 
as you can see, I was able to take those guys on pretty simply. Whoa, that <laughs> that sucked. Um, so obviously you can see there's uh, it's not just uh, enemy ships I have to worry about. There's turrets and things as well. And uh, yeah, and bugs. Ooh. And that guy is is deadly. Um, oh, okay. And then one of his buddies has come along. So this is where the shield helps a lot because I can I can block. And uh, if I'm good enough, I can put the enemies in between me and him and have him shoot the enemy. Yeah, my shield saved me there. Damn, this is uh, <laughs> it's hard to not remember. Okay, so I'm gonna go and hide over here and wait for this guy to come, and then I'm gonna hack him with my sword like this. Yeah, bring it. Come on. Okay. Just like that, is it? Okay. And you're quite a lot more nimble than most of the enemies, especially this guy, as you can see, he's pretty big. So I can kind of uh, dart in between the, the bits of the level. Obviously it takes a while to get used to the controls. Um, darting in between things isn't something you see the average player doing when they first play the game. Because uh, the physics, like I say, physics-based controls take a while to get used to. But when you master them, there's nothing better than just like flying around an enemy in circles and uh, destroying them like so. So I think this is one of the few games, especially like recent games, um, that allows you to actually become a space pilot, which, let's face it, we all want to be at least once in our lives. Um, and just like, do you know what I mean? You, you have the feeling of actually piloting the ship, well, and a mech, of course. I'm going to just go back to the ship for a bit, because uh, I want to show you this too, obviously. A bit more missiles, I think. Uh, like I say, like there, there aren't really any other games that, that do this to this extent, and obviously a lot of the old shooters that uh, this game is inspired by uh, it gave you that feeling in the 80s and the 90s. Um, but this game also has a lot of other inspirations, and uh, for savvy players out there, they might see the parallels to Halo. So the combat, we definitely want a great AI. Um, so the enemies, you know what I mean? You're, you feel like you're up against enemies that can. We can give you a run for your money every time you fight. We didn't want it to be, you know, become boring just fighting the same enemies and fighting waves, things like that. Um, things like Space Invaders, where the enemies, you know, have a set pattern. The enemies are definitely clever. And they're out to kill you. Uh, I scripted them myself, so I know this. Um, and basically, the parallels to Halo run in the fact that you have great enemy AI, um, and you have the, down in the left corner, you have the health and the shields, um, and that works in exactly the same way as Halo, in that you, you use your shields first, and then you start losing health. As you can see, I still have four health, because I'm pretty good. Um, but, you know, like, knowing that and take advantage of your shields, so that when you use, you uh, lose your shields, I'm just going to hack this guy, you kind of need to get out, you know what I mean? Like, you, you need to give yourself a break. Oh, I found, there you go, Admiral Alphamoto. Try and grab it. Oh, I can't. I need to. Uh... All right, boys. Don't mind me. This is where you can use the environment to your advantage. Uh, let's try and get that guy to walk into the fire. And the shield's pretty cool. Let me show you this. Oh! How do you like that? Let's make sure he doesn't kill Ag Admiral Makamoto here. That'd be really sucky. Wow. Okay. You want to play like that? Huh? So this guy. I can juke as well with the ship, which is quite important. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So I can uh, I can dodge, and it's a cool little effect where you kind of come out and jump out of the screen. Um, but definitely for these guys with the bazookas, the ship is my preference because it allows you to put some distance between them, and you can time your juke a lot easier, like so, when you know uh, how far away they are. Yeah, just like that. Oh, I got me a crash coin. So, these are... You probably can't see where I just pointed, so that was silly. The uh, the purple coins that you get are crash coins, and my buddy Crash that I showed you in the shop, he's... Well, he's not a criminal, but uh, he's not the uh, the most... Uh, okay, it's all good. Uh, he's not the most... I can't think of the word. The, the most legal of, of beings. And basically, uh, picking up his crash coins will allow you to get money at the start of a season. Um, it's kind of a way to offset the, the fact that you die. Because in this game, it, it's it's fairly punishing um, in terms of death. Uh, you know, dying in games, I think, over the years has become this thing that you just like, you die and then it restarts and you die again and you restart. And there's no way to, 
no wait to death, which I think I'm going to experience pretty soon by looking. things. Um, in this game, we try to make it fair, but to the point that if you die, you know, you you, you lose stuff. And dying should be a big thing. And uh, obviously, we looked at games like Spelunky, where you know, when you die, that's it, your game's over. Our game was originally similar, and we added the arcade mode later on, which basically allowed you to restart missions. But even then, you the health you lose in a mission, let's say I, hel I lost uh, all my health down to one, and I finished the mission, I'd only have one health for the rest of the season, and that's, that's pretty tough. So you've got to kind of make sure that you <laughs> you stay alive um, is a big part of the game. And when you have just a single laser like I do right now, some of these enemies that I'm facing are not the easiest. And of course he's brought some buddies along. There's another thing the AI will do is go and find more friends to make the party even more lively. Um, okay, I'm going to try and put some distance between us and then mech these guys. Show them who's boss. Okay, here you go. So the sword not only obviously destroys my enemies, but it uh, reflects their lasers, and you can use it to deflect lasers like so. And it's pretty effective, um, because a lot of these enemies, as you can see, shoot a fair amount of lasers at once. It allows me to uh, attack and defend at the same time. And you can't use your sword and the shield at the same time, because uh, that would be silly. Obviously you'd be using far too much battery and your phone would die instantly. So, um, just like Pokemon Go. But uh, the sword, like I say, it's, it's good for both defense and offense. My shields are blown. That is uh, probably the most famous line in the game, which I'm pretty proud to say I was the voice actor for. Um, and there it is again, and you'll find it comes up a little bit too often, and I'm ridiculed pretty much every day in the office for saying that one, um, which, you know, makes me happy. Let's just destroy some asteroids just for the hell of it. Um, even the asteroids, you know, they're, they're useful. Uh, like, especially these ones, they have a lot more health. You can see it has 28 health. Um, and I can use these as weapons, or, or as shields, obviously, against my enemies. Let's uh, go in. So I kind of skipped over the whole story bit, which was that... Uh, sorry, I've played this game so many times. So I, I'm here to rescue Admiral Akimoto. And we found, we found his, uh, there you go, oh, okay, that didn't do anything to him, that was, didn't get enough force behind it. Like I say, the physics, it's all based on Newtonian physics, so if you don't have enough force uh, with collisions, it doesn't do any damage. But anyway, the story. Um, I found his escape pod, but it was a decoy. These are dastardly Imperials we're dealing with. Um, it was not him, so I'm going after the other the other objective, which reach the escape pod, as it says in my top left, and this arrow on the right, the white arrow, is guiding me to the right place. That's now how I know where to go. Um, otherwise, I'd get lost in the depths of space. Oh, okay, we found a rhino. These guys are pretty nasty. Um, they've got a gun turret on top of them, and they take a lot of damage. I'm going to switch to my ship and kind of be a bit stealthy about this. And the missiles, I, I really like the missiles in that the you can lock on, the enemies won't know they've been locked on until you fire. But by then, let's face it, it's too late. And then, of course, you can lock off if you don't want to. But I'm going to lock on this guy, give him a full barrage, and then lay into him. With the mech, I think, actually. Yeah. Like so, yes. And if you can corner them, they may have a gun turret. But you have a sword and a shield, and let's face it, there's, there's nothing better than a sword and a shield. So I've taken that guy down, that was pretty easy. Okay, so I found uh, my first chest. And we actually have a map, which looks really cool. Um, and I'm just going to show you. So I was in this place a minute ago, and I've come flown all the way through space, and now I'm in the second Space Hulk. And I know that Admiral Akamoto is in here somewhere, and the arrow is pointing me to it. And you'll see, I'm kind of on right on top of it, but on the map, I'm on this uh, green blob, which shows me this chest. And in the chest is the ship abilities, it says. And oh yeah, tight hold. 100% extra mech grapple duration. So if I grab an enemy like this, um, I can carry them around and then I can throw them at other enemies and it, it damages them. Uh, but if I hold them for too long, especially the big guys like this one, if I grab him and hold him for too long, he'll break away. Um, but the upgrade I just got allows me to hold them for a bit longer. I mean, enemies like this guy, I can literally hold for a matter of like under a second. 
But if I do that, I can throw him in the fire, jump around, knock him back into the fire. I didn't need to. He's, he's done. Um, yeah, and uh, so the... What was I talking about? The grapple, that's right. The grapple, I can grapple obviously objects and enemies, but the upgrades are crucial in editing your playstyle. So the upgrades you get are somewhat randomized, um, which is cool because it means like every place... Oh, okay, this is a nasty squad. Um, so yeah, the upgrades are somewhat randomized. So every playthrough you get kind of different upgrades and I mean the savvy player will basically try and play to the strengths of the upgrades. So obviously I just got the grapple uh, upgrade. It means I can grab these guys and use them. Oh, that wasn't good. Throwing an explosive right in front of the guy's face. Obviously didn't make him any, but again, I like this. Uh, this guy is uh, well, the main character from Guacamelee. Another sweet indie game is uh, piloting this mech, and he has a red pepper for a sword, and it's pretty spicy, so I don't want to get hit by it. And so I have my shield, and as you see, if I time it right, uh, this is inspired by a lot of old uh, games like Capcom games, like Onimusha and stuff, where if you uh, defend it just at the right time, you can uh, deflect the enemy's attack back at them or stun them. When you do it right, it's, it's not easy. Um, so let's try that again. Okay. Now I have this guy on my tail too, so I'm going to just take this guy out first. And then we'll deal with that guy. Whoa, I hate those things. Yeah, it worked out pretty well there. Okay. I'm going to grapple him. If I throw him against the wall, it'll kind of... Well, it'll just destroy him in one by the looks thing. Um, usually that kind of stuns them, and then you can take them out. But yeah, I guess he was on low health. And yeah, I mean, as you can probably see, the, the visual style is very inspired by uh, by old games and old anime, um, especially the anime part. The bottom left, we have our hero, Atak. Um, he's, he's a pretty cool dude. Uh, and you have the portrait, which kind of animates as he's going, which is kind of one of the, the cool features of this game. Oh, okay, that looks ominous. Yeah, me too. Um, okay, so here I go. I'm going to grab one of these. Oh, okay. It's boss time. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, we have this giant green thing. We have a turret up the top and a turret down the bottom. And we have a giant mech who's uh, trying to find me at the moment. I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, I think I'm going to get that. Oh, great. They're firing missiles at me. That's great. Um, let's grab this. So the plugs are great because they knock out enemy shields instantly, so he now has no shields. Whoa, but he does have a stupid... Okay, I have one health left. This is bad. This is very bad. He's coming for me. So, it doesn't help. There's turrets all around me shooting missiles. But one thing some players might know is you can actually grab these missiles and throw them at the enemy. So if I had a bit more health, I would... Uh... <laughs> I would play around a bit more, but uh, I don't want to die. I want to show you the end of this mission. So, okay. Let's start attacking, because that's more fun. See the ship against this girl. Oh, damn. This is bad. This is very bad. It would be good to kill these turrets as well, but they have shields. Uh, special shields on. Which, I'm not hurting them. And the way to hurt them is actually... We need to destroy their power source. So you can see there's that... Uh, power source supplying them power. Whoa, if I indulge in missiles. So I need to rip off this. Like so. And then I'm going to go in and rip out their battery. Without dying, if possible. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Say goodnight. One down, one more to go. Just grab that. Throw that at him. Yeah, nice. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> I'm glad these things are slow. And obviously I can use the... Uh... Oh, I got him! Nice! That was pretty cool. I've never defeated him like that before. Still wasting time. I just saved your life, mate. Okay, as you can see, Admiral Akimoto... Yeah, you deserve that. Yes, sir. Maybe I'll just throw him around a bit. Um... No, I best not. He might get angry. Uh, okay, so I managed to defeat the boss. Um, 
he did nearly kill me to be fair. Oh, okay. Usually in the game, once you've defeated the like the objective, there will then be a couple of squads to kind of just make sure you can't get to the end uh, as easily as you think you can. And uh, I'm using the uh, the right stick at the moment to kind of use my camera to look around. And actually, uh, the mech has a slightly zoomed in camera, you know, because he's a melee fighter. It's best to be able to see things closer up. If I switch to the ship, you'll notice the camera zooms out just a little bit. And I can use that to my advantage. And uh, if I just go around the corner here, I can use my camera and the right stick, like I say, and kind of find out exactly who I'm dealing with here. Where am I dealing with? Oh, okay, it's hyenas. They're only level 1 hyenas, so they're not too nasty, and they've just blown their own shields, so I'm going to try and take them out. Hopefully I won't die, because that would really suck at this point. I do have that grapple thing, as I said earlier. And these guys, vultures, these uh, these are basically mech fodder. Uh, they have frontal shields, just like this guy as well, but if I grapple them from the front, as you see, I pop their shields, which is very satisfying. And then because I have that grapple upgrade, I can just punch them to death. Uh, makes it a bit easier. Okay, let's go and pick up my buddy. Admiral Akamotes. Okay, I've got him. Where are we going, Beam? While carrying escape pod, activate the warp beacon. Okay, I can do that. Great, more turrets. And <laughs> more giant mechs. I think I'm going to uh, utilize the old uh, stealth part of the game and just try and breeze through these guys. As you can see, the arrow is pointing down. I don't need to take them on. And that's part of the game, is you don't have to just take on every single squad. Um, you obviously, every time you, you get into a fight, you risk death. And like I said, death is pretty punishing. So sometimes you need to know when to cut your losses. And I got to the warp point, so I managed to finish the mission, which I'm pretty happy with, because I did nearly die. And now I've walked out, and that's it. Yes. And that's pretty cool, it's good to be said. So these are all the enemies I defeated, and my clear time, 18 minutes. Wow, that kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> so most of the missions are about like 10, 15 minutes. We wanted to make it at you know a time that you could kind of just jump into the game and play a little bit if you wanted to, and um, it didn't demand too much of your time. So hopefully you'll agree that 18 minutes isn't too long. Um, so as you can see, I defeated a bunch of enemies, uh, a lot of stingrays, some giant mechs, some more giant mechs, and the boss, of course. And I got me three crash coins, um, which is cool because I've just finished the season, so then I'd get more for the next season. And I head back to the mothership, and Beam is my commander. And yeah, so when the season finishes, you get the, uh, the credits. Obviously, you got Jake up there, who's our director and our CEO, and Rise our studio head. There's some cool designs in here, and some of them are done by uh, some famous Japanese artists. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, so I only have like 10 minutes left, I think. Um, it's been awesome so far. I really want to show you, so this is the title screen. And as you'll notice, it says Galaxy of the Void. And the Void is a DLC that we created recently. Um, it's out on PC and it's coming very soon to PlayStation 4, which we're really excited about. And I just wanted to show you a bit of that and basically show you how intense this game can get, because it gets pretty intense. So the void is, uh, as it says, a challenge for people who don't like, no, that's uh, arcade, arcade endless mode, destroy enemies for the best global leader score, leaderboard score. Basically, you know, it's a score run. Um, we wanted to create an endless mode. And basically, whilst an endless mode is fun a lot of the time, something that's literally endless can go on forever. And so what the void is, is basically a score run that gets very hard very quickly. Um, whatever you do, don't die. Thanks. Great advice. Um, in this mode, you do actually start up, start off with a souped-up ship, and uh, the ship itself looks a little bit different. As you can see, it's got like more missiles, um, bigger engines, and just generally is a lot more badass, which helps because in general the enemies are a lot more badass too. And uh, I think you'll see immediately this is a place you don't really want to be in. Um, so if I fly towards the edge, there's these uh, the void storm is constantly uh, threatening <laughs> and this this uh, this void storm slowly closes in <laughs> as the level proceeds so you kind of need to finish it quickly otherwise you might find yourself um, with very little space to move in 
And the focus of the Void is combat, because that's kind of the core of Galaxy. As you've seen already, a lot of it is fighting enemies. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, it's a lot of fun to do. Like, as you've already seen, there's lots of different ways to defeat your enemies. And your enemies will try to defeat you in lots of different ways. And that's kind of the core of the game. It's like moment-to-moment -moment decisions on, you know, how do I beat these guys? And how are they going to try and beat me? And trying to overcome that. Like I say, we have lots of things in there. Obviously, the old mechanics are things like just, you know, shooting lasers and shooting missiles. Um, and upgrades, things like this, which is energy leech, 30% chance to instantly recharge shields when an enemy is killed. That's it's not too bad. Not too shabby. I'm um, not too... Too depressed about that. Okay, and as I said, these vulture guys here, these are basically mech fodder, so I'm gonna grab one of them before his buddy even realizes he's gone. Oh, okay, broke out. So, uh, the enemies in the game, there's actually, um, originally there were three different tiers of enemies, three different levels of enemies. Um, each of them obviously harder than the last in terms of everything, you know, their life, their shields, their weapons. Um, for the void, I was lucky enough to get to design a fourth tier of enemies basically are like the Grim Reaper um, they will come for you and they will kill you and only the best players will be able to defeat them and towards the end of the void you know most of the squads are made up of these uh, these more deadly types and they will kill you so it's basically how long can you survive and how much score can you get which you know any score based thing that's the core of it you see these uh, this level one guy basically has no chance and like I said earlier, like the mech, he's the guy to go to for one-on-one -on -one fights. The ship, I think, is great for uh, more than one-on-one -on -one fights because he has the juke, which allows you to, I'm going to try and illustrate here, strafe around enemies and juke over their shots. Didn't do so well there. Um, the juke has a cooldown, so you kind of have to wait. Let's try now. Uh... Oh, that was bad. And these guys I hate. They have explosive grenades that uh, explode in your face when they're shooting of course which that guy was not and like I say one on one fight so I'm going to switch to the mech and show this guy who's boss just two imperial guys up here and one thing I didn't mention is uh, you probably noticed but we have different enemy factions so we have the imperials the purple guys who I'm fighting right now that guy was shooting missiles at me I don't like that you have to teach him who the Missile King is. Um, we have the Imperials and we have the Raiders. Whoa, I'm gonna keep away from that. And the Raiders are kind of deranged, um, screwed up pirate guys, uh, space pirates really. They're basically like, they've stayed in the void for too long and they worship the void and they've just gone completely crazy. And so most of the units are very, you know, very aggressive. Um, but unlike the Imperials, they don't have shields that recharge, so they're generally easier to kill. But you do need to be careful, like I say, because they're very aggressive. And then we have the bugs, um, which are... Uh, they crash grumbling away there. Okay, finally I get to buy something. Uh, so I obviously got some uh, some money. Uh, it's called salvage in this game. Um, so I can buy some stuff. There's not too much to go around. And I haven't lost any health, so I don't really need to repair. This one, though, it's... Uh, it's cheap, but it's it's pretty crucial. Extra boost speed allows me to go faster, which against some of these enemies is is very important because uh, otherwise there's no way to outrun them. So I'm going to go straight back in. So I just cleared one level of the void, and as you go up in levels, as you can imagine, the enemies get harder and harder. And like I said, pretty quickly uh, we ramped up the difficulty. So each run didn't take you know like an hour upwards. It usually lasts about 20, 30 minutes at the most. So suddenly we've now got level 1 enemies and level 2 enemies together. This guy I'm fighting now is a level 2 enemy. And he does double the damage of a level 1. Okay, bring it on guys. Excuse my grapple again. Yeah. So I'm going to go in and see if there's any upgrades. So there's uh, upgrades peppered throughout the void. Because obviously you want more stuff. Extra max health. Excellent. I really want to show you guys some more weapons. Which I actually could do if I cheated, but I'm no cheater. So I'm using the map to try and look at where the treasure chests are, and I just saw that green blob, and here's the treasure chest. Pierce shot. Okay, that's useful. Um, it allows me to 
shoot through enemies. So you'll notice my laser actually goes through enemies now. And if I line them up properly, it means I can hit more than one in one shot, which is pretty cool. Whoa. Okay, I did not juke in time there. Let's, uh, let's try and fly towards the end. Uh, I just want to show you, I only have a few minutes left, um, how hard this game can get. And this guy, actually, the, uh, the black painted uh, mech dude, he is a level 3 rhino, uh, bulldog, sorry. Whoa, okay. I need to focus a bit more. Um, he's, he's really nasty. Like, he has this charge where he'll come at you if you're shooting at him, like so. And yeah, he gets on you pretty quick, so. I haven't used my missiles much, so I'm going to use them to try and take these guys out. And as you can see, you can just paint guys and rain down fiery hell upon them. It's a lot of fun. And my, uh, my streaming screen is right in the way of the enemy portraits. I'm sorry about that. But uh, all the enemies have a portrait, just like the bottom left, I have a portrait. And they all have animating portraits, and they, they're not happy when you kill them, as you can imagine. Cool, level two, done. How long have you got left, Brett? What's that, sorry? I'm late. It's probably fine. Yeah, okay. I just want to show you one more level if we can. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bug out for the day. So back in the shop. Um, oh, shields overcharge. Extra shields, that's always good. So I'm going to buy that and get straight back in. Let's see if I can't get a different laser to show you. Okay, here we go. So yeah, Galaxy's the game. Um, it's out on PC and it's out on PlayStation. The Void DLC is coming to PlayStation very soon. We're sorry for the wait. And uh, yeah, please, I mean, try it out. Uh, it's unlike anything else. And we really want people to experience it for themselves. Because even streaming, I hopefully you get a good sense of how uh, volatile and, and cool the game can be. But uh, unless you play it for yourself, you, you can't really understand how good the physics feel on the controls. And how good it feels to be a pilot. Um, just going to pick up. Uh, blueprints I didn't talk about at all. Those are things you need to unlock in order to get better items in the shop. That's one of the reasons I'm not getting some of the... The better laser upgrades in the shop right now but I'm just gonna leave those guys to it so the void as I said is a score based thing and if I just bypass enemies I can get through to higher levels but it's kind of pointless because all it basically means is I get through with no score and really there's oh, okay okay so we have just uh, found the Baron who's kind of the uh, the anti-hero of the whole thing the whole game and he has the uh, the charge beam and I've just picked up the precision which basically gives me more accurate and faster and more damaging shots. But my shot fires slower. But as you can see, he's got this beam. I'm just going to show you. He's fighting that bug. He has a charged laser, which if that gets on you, you're pretty much doomed. So I think just for the fun of it, I might let him kill me. Um, come on, bring it on, man. He's burning. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's pretty nasty. And I have this guy on my tail too. I got one health left. And I'm down. I I wasn't even meaning to die there, so. And you see here we have this nice uh, game over screen. 70,000. It's somewhat respectable. I've got to level 3. And we have the leaderboards here. And uh, I'm uh, number 127. And it's pretty insane. Some people get score in the millions, which is no easy feat. So yeah, you got to respect those people. But anyway, uh, I think that's all the time we have, uh, sadly. I could go on playing this all day, but uh, like I say, Galaxy on PC, it's coming to PS4. Uh, the Void is coming to the PS4 very soon. Uh, the game is already out, obviously. And uh, yeah, I hope you check it out, and I hope this was fun. It was definitely fun for me playing. Uh, my first stream, actually, and thank you. I uh, didn't really look at the chat much, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to stream again soon, and uh, hopefully you have fun. Thanks for joining us, and... Uh, Check you later. Over and out.